Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. You've heard about it before. We've talked about it here at Good Shepherd, the Kairos Network of the New Jersey District. It is a church planting network that has recently begun. And here's the thing. It's been decades since a new church has been planted here in New Jersey. And yet, right now, we have two new churches that are being planted. You've heard from Pastor Matt Lina Canaan, who was with us last February and also preached here while I was on vacation during the summer and the work that he's doing in Hoboken. And we have here today with us Pastor Dan Fenko, who is planning a second church, a, a very different church plant from the church plant that Pastor Lina Caden is doing. And I'm going to let Pastor Dan uh, share a little bit about his work as he shares God's word with us here this morning. So let's take this opportunity, let's extend a good uh, Warm Good Shepherd welcome and offer a praise clap to God for Pastor Dan. Go. Well, good morning, Good Shepherd. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm here with uh, my family, my wife, Jerusha, uh, Sophia, Shelby, and Joshua. And um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity for me to be here to share uh, what God is doing in Burnsville. And so today I'm going to talk about Faith Journey, Camino de Fe, a church that was started um, November 1st, 2017. And church planting is starting a church from the ground up. And right now we meet in different homes around Burnsville, and we gather at 7.30. Uh, we pray, uh, we read God's word. And, and, and we have fellowship. And so we started with, uh, with one family, the Figueroas, uh, in October 2017. And today we have about 20 people that worships every Wednesday at 730. And also, just so you know, I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm an associate pastor at Somerset Hills Lutheran Church in Baskin Ridge. And so Baskin Ridge is five minutes from Bernardville. And so one of our members at Somerset asked me, why start a new church? Why not bring that community to here since we're five minutes away? And so the answer is this. We're following Jesus' ministry pattern. He left his throne in heaven and came into our world and made a tent among us. And so that is exactly what we're doing in Burnsville. Rather than opening the doors of Sunday morning and waiting for people to come, which, by the way, they're not doing, right? Can you agree with me? We go to where they are and are among them and see the things that are doing along with them in this journey. And so Jesus had a purpose for coming here, right? He came to proclaim the good news to to give sight to the spiritually blind, to love sinners, and everyone who was lost. And that is exactly what God is doing in Burnsville. Let me tell you, lives are being transformed by the gospel. People who didn't hear the gospel now are believers. People who didn't go to church for years now, they gather every Wednesday. Now you may say, well, Pastor Dan... That's not a Sunday. Well, guess what, my friends? Some people do work on Sundays and Saturdays. Some people work seven days a week. And some people work two jobs. And so for this particular community, Wednesday works. Now, don't get me wrong. We're, we're planning to meet on Sundays. 
For now, this is what is working for us. And not just this community in Burnsville, but we want to have different communities around Burnsville and in, in the surrounding areas so that the gospel can spread. And so we want to be known as a church that worships during the week and gathers once a month. That is our vision. And so one of our members um, shared this with me a couple of weeks ago, and she said, you know, for me, Camino de Fe is a church that takes you by the hand and walks with you in this life's journey. Isn't that amazing? That someone can say that? That, that we are a church that walks with them. You know, uh, there was a family... Uh, that was having relationship problems before they started coming to our church. Uh, things are not perfect, but now they have a family, una familia, that walks with them, that, that can be a support for them, that can pray for them. There are single mothers who now have peace, joy, comfort, and strength to move on with their lives because they have a group of believers that are praying for them constantly. And they have families all over New Jersey because that's what I'm doing, going to different churches to share what God is doing there. So we have many Christians praying for them as well. So in addition to prayer and study of God's word, we eat together. Yes, we do. We eat together after worship every Wednesday. And that is where relationships happen. That is where we get to know one another. And, 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 and we know their struggles and we know what everybody's doing. And you know, these families are so generous because, I mean, to eat every Wednesday, and, and they're, they're not just bringing cookies and, and, and refreshments, light refresh, refreshments. They, they're bringing meals. Actually, I think I gained a little bit of weight since last November. And, but they are there and they support one another. They love one another. See, this is what God is creating in Burnersville. This is, God, this is God's transformation here in New Jersey. And, and, and this is what we're doing through uh, Word. To proclaim the news, to recover the sight of the spiritually blind, to, to set the oppressed free. But guess what? Sometimes as a church, we forget that this is also our way of living. To go out into the world, to proclaim the good news. To let people know how much God loves them and that he died for them. So that they would not be condemned have eternal life. See, throughout Jesus' ministry, he gave us the greatest example for us to follow, to love like him, to live like him, to act like him, to speak like him. He gave us the great commandment, right, to go and make disciples of all nations. You know, today, my friends, we don't have... We have this great opportunity that we can open our doors and the nations are there. You don't need to travel overseas anymore. Well, you still can. But to share the good news, you don't need to go anywhere. Just open your doors and you'll see. I think in, in, our, in our community, we have about five or six different nations gathered every Wednesday. Isn't that amazing? We are fulfilling the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. Families who have not gone to church, who are struggling, who are oppressed, who have been beaten down by the devil and life, now have hope of Christ. And they are learning what it means to be God's child. A couple of months ago, someone said to me, so you're telling me, Pastor, that I don't need to do anything to receive salvation? Do you mean I don't need to 
to be a good person and, 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 and pray. And, and, and No, I said, all you need to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. And that's when the gospel became real for her. Right? Now, the good works, everything else comes after that, right? When Jesus pours his love in us, then out of gratitude, we go out into the world and share the, the love that he has given us. And so they know that salvation is not by works, but by faith. In Jesus and what he has done for us. And so here's a question for you this morning. Are we truly following Jesus? Are we living like him? Do we look at people through Jesus' eyes? Is there anything in us that is hindering our true calling? Because let me tell you, the go and make disciples... Pastors go and make disciples. That's for all of us to teach them about Christ, to share what God has and is doing in our lives. And so, is there anything in you that is hindering the true calling? See, Jesus was all about meeting the needs. Of the person before him. And we are to be that way as well. And so Jesus calls us to examine our hearts. To examine the way we do things. And to open our eyes. To see if there's anything in us that is hindering our true calling. So this church started November 1st, 2017. But... I was going through a training before that. Uh, I think we started training July 2017. And as Phil mentioned, this is an initiative of the New Jersey District and the Kairos Network. And the, the director is Pastor Matt Peoples. Right? And so I was doing training with him. And in one of our meetings, he asked me, he said, Dan, do you want to start a Spanish ministry? And my response was an unwavering no. No, thank you. And so I, I know it makes sense, right? I'm Latino. I speak Spanish. Uh, so why not? And so, you know, in the past we've done house churches and, and things didn't work out well. Uh, we didn't have much support from the community or the church. And I was, I was overwhelmed. And one of the things that I did for that particular time is I, I was an interim pastor at, at Somerset, and what I did is I copied the Sunday bulletin, and I translated it into Spanish. I translated the hymns. At that point, we were very traditional. We translated the hymns. We hired the organist, and, you know, I thought, hey, I'm doing a good thing, so here it is. But that didn't connect with them. Even though it was in Spanish, it didn't connect with them. Why? Well, because people went to church only for a baptism or wedding. And here, I'm a pastor, right? And I think this is good for them. So here, this is what we do here. You should do the same. And that didn't connect with them. And so God was working in my heart. And as the training went on, I started connecting with Spanish-speaking people who were now interested in learning about God, interested in their faith. In other words, the Holy Spirit was working. And all I just all I had to do was open my eyes and say, okay, we're going somewhere here. And so in one of our meetings with Matt, I said, I think God is is changing things around me. I still don't want to do Spanish ministry. But there's a great need in Burnsville. And I cannot keep saying no. I cannot keep saying no to God. I cannot keep saying go to what the Holy Spirit is doing there. And that was the start of Camino de Fe, faith journey. 
See, God was changing my heart. He was allowing me to see people through his eyes. And when I did that, I realized that I was no different than them. That I'm still a sinner in need of forgiveness. So Camino de Fe is a church that walks with its community. We want to be known as a church that shows the love of God to our neighbors. And we provide resources for them to adapt and engage in and, and be part of the American way of life. And we do this by hosting different life skills workshops. One of the workshops that we did was a first-time home buyers. Oh, here it is. First time home buyers program, and I partnered with five uh, with with a realtor from town, and he brought five bilingual people who, uh, and we had about 35 people in our workshop, and uh, and it was all done in Spanish, and people were able to to learn about what 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 they need to do to buy a house. Here's a picture of me and 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 the realtors and all the uh, uh, the mortgage officers and everyone else who participated that. That time, and so we want to know. We, we want to be known as a church without a building. And guess what? We want to own a laundromat. Uh, I see someone smiling over there. Why, right? So this is what happens in one of our gatherings. Someone was late and shared with us. That she was late because she was driving. She drove 25 minutes in one direction to just do her laundry, and then someone else said, "Oh, you know what? I drive 25 minutes on the other direction to do my laundry," and that's when it came in. And I said to myself, "What if we own a laundromat? We provide the need for the community. We use the space for worship, because that's important too." And any revenues goes to the church. And so that is our, our, our big dream. It's a dream, right? But we're praying about it. We're doing our research, our investigations. I think I, if you ask me today what it takes, the steps to, to take to, to open a laundromat, I can t tell you exactly what it is. Because, I mean, I know a laundromat all it's, it's in my head. I know everything now, I think. And so we want churches and we want individuals like you to walk with us in this journey. And so here are ways that you can walk with us. First, pray for us. You know, none of this is my work. This is the work of the Holy Spirit and faithful Christians like you who pray for these families, who, who, who pray for God's kingdom to come here on earth for people to know Jesus. So pray for that. Pray for these families that their faith will be strengthened and that they, the faith that they have, that they can share it with others. Second, if by any chance you know someone in Burnsville, let me know. I'm sure some of you know someone. I was at a at a, a networking event last week and someone said to me, my my nephew is uh, is running for councilman in Burnsville, give him a call, tell him Aunt Sally, uh, you met Aunt Sally. I said, okay, I will call him. So if you know anyone in Burnsville, let me know. And third, help us uh, financially. For a church plant to be sustainable uh, financially, uh, it needs support for three years, and then hopefully by that time, they will be able to continue to do ministry for a long time. So if you can make us part of your uh, mission um, support here. I know you were not ready for that, so I brought envelopes. You can take them home, pray about it, I won't feel offended, and give us you our lead. And so here are more pictures that I want to share with you of a few people reading the Bible. Can you, can you imagine that? People reading, actually reading the Bible? And this is what God is doing there. We're singing. We're praying. 
And we had our first uh, two baptisms uh, a few months ago. So I want to I want to leave you with this. Look at people his eyes. And I tell you that your lives will be transformed and that you will do anything in your power to provide for their needs. Because Jesus did, God did everything in his power to save us, to save you, to save me. He, ha- he gave his one and only son so that you and I would not be condemned but have eternal life. But that doesn't mean that, that we keep it to ourselves, my friends. No, it's not just for us in Sunday mornings. It's for us to be strengthened and to go out into the world. Because there's people suffering There's people that are spiritually blind. There's people that need to hear the gospel and be saved and understand that they don't need to do anything to to attain salvation. They just need to believe what the Bible says. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Camino de Fe and for the families there. And we pray that you will continue to strengthen them in their faith. That they will continue to share what you have put in their hearts. And I pray for good shepherd, Lord. And I pray that that they will be able to see the needs of their community, Lord. And do anything in their power through your Holy Spirit so that they can share the good news with others. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.